See, most fighters, at least most successful fighters, usually start boxing in between the ages of 8 to 12 years old, give or take, and they usually retire somewhere in their mid to late 30s with the exception of a select few. But for me, it was different because I started boxing around the age of 21 years old, and that gave me a completely different outlook on boxing. So I'm going to give a little backstory on why I took six years off of boxing and how I ended up coming back, ultimately turning pro at 34 years old. At the time I was working in retail, my mindset was I need to go to college so that I can get a degree and a good job. That is what I thought the definition of successful was. Being a pro fighter was not on my mind at all, especially after doing some research and recognizing that at 112 pounds, being extremely small with little to no amateur experience meant not making that much money at all, no matter how good I was. So immediately that made me put boxing in the hobby and passion bucket and I kept it moving. After that, I started working at Nike and I became a manager making decent money. So I chose to make the decent money over doing what I love. But if there is one thing that I can tell you, that was a huge mistake, which if we fast forward past the 21 amateur fights, me missing a chance to make the Olympics due to appendicitis and basically giving up on boxing on October 29th, 2022, I turned pro. Firepower in this coalition. We just turned the field into a demolition. It was desolate, but I had premonition. I was training for war every exhibition, every extra mission, every enemy listening. Get off my dick. I got bad intentions. Make it right every wrong. And I'm back with a vengeance. I show you the ropes. Peace in my town. I can show you the coast. Up in the shots if they wanted to smoke. If you know, then you know. Suit it up. My whole team do the same. Don't you forget who. Mini nights for me in terms of training in preparation to my pro fight was me alone in the gym after hours lucky enough that i had um the owner of my gym who would allow me to stay after gave me a key to be able to open and close the gym if i need to to be able to get my training in now i do not recommend that to everybody i definitely feel like i was equipped enough with enough knowledge and i had enough of a community in boxing just from networking over the years that if i recorded myself and i sent it to people that i really trust and i know that they know boxing they can tell me exactly what I need to work on or I could watch the footage myself and be able to self-correct but if I was looking to take boxing extremely serious and maybe even turn this into a career to try and be a world champion that is not something I would do so I do not recommend that for anybody so what i did my actual routine to get ready was i had two to three days a week where i would do my strength and conditioning two days with full body if i decided to do a third day that third day would be my explosive day it was a lot of plyometrics and more stuff that was specific to boxing i had six days where i would do my actual boxing workout which consisted of three days of floor work three days of sparring if i can get the sparring in i was trying to spar as much as possible because of my time out of boxing being away from for six years i really had to make sure that i try and get my distance back get my timing back and really build my punch tolerance back so i also made sure that that consisted of four days of conditioning work now my conditioning work was different from a lot of fighters because i can't run i have chondromalacia and my right knee where it's i have no cartilage so it's my thigh bone and my kneecap are grinding against each other so running causes me immense pain so what i did was i just used a salt bike three days a week i would do sprint all out interval kind of like max out sprints and then some other condition and work aside from that after three weeks of max out sprints and then i would have one day which would be an active recovery now my active recovery consisted of 30 minutes of zone two cardio so i would do it at a pace that i am comfortable enough to talk without any problem and i am not gasping for air i'm not losing breath and i would just do that as a way to recover in the middle of the week so for me that day was on wednesday so a good amount of fighters in boxing have a manager which will negotiate how much they get paid per fight, talk to promoters and matchmakers on their behalf, and through whatever relationships that they built up, open doors that normally the fighter wouldn't be able to open up at that time. As well as in boxing, you have promoters which will also ensure that you are fighting on maybe TV or even one of the apps, and also can put you in position to fight for a world title, given the fighters that they currently promote or the relationships that they have built with other promoters. Now, in turning pro at 34 years old and being off for six years before that left me with not too many options of a manager or promoter to sign with and that means that for me I had to take it into my own responsibility to talk to a promoter and get a fight. Now luckily the owner of my gym had just started a promotional company called R&B Promotions so it made the job of me finding a promoter to talk to pretty easy and to go from an amateur to a professional really all I had to do was fill out some paperwork that was required by the state athletic control board and ask you a bunch of 
just general information, including the requirements for me to get a full medical exam, which will run you $715 in the state of New Jersey. Now, after that, it was all about me trying to figure out how to find an opponent, which the promoter takes care of. And since I want to be the A side in this situation, I will have to cover my opponent's costs as well. So there are two ways that I can cover this cost. I can pay it completely out of pocket my own, or I can cover it in ticket sales. So here's a quick breakdown of everything that I had to cover in ticket sales. And that is me and my opponent's medicals, which is $1,430. It's my fight purse of $800 and my opponent's fight purse of $1,200. Now, unfortunately in this situation, I did not sell enough tickets to cover all of the costs I was a bit short, but fortunate enough that I didn't have to pay that back. But in most cases, if you did not fulfill all of the costs, you will have to come out of pocket for whatever expenses is left uncovered by the ticket cost. So I know now you wonder, how did I make any money off of the fight? And honestly, in terms of the fight purse itself, I didn't make any money at all, but I did make money due to sponsors. Now those sponsors came from relationships that I had built as well as me growing my social media following at the time. And that allowed me to make a little bit over $3,000 in sponsorship money, which in the grand scheme of things is not a lot of money, but something is better than nothing. Overall, you have to understand that when you are looking to go pro, if you do not have a manager that will cover these costs early or you are not signed to a promoter, then you will have to cover these costs. And that means in order to cover these costs without coming out of pocket, you have to be really good at ticket sales. Or you could come in as the opponent in most situations and start your career potentially fighting uphill battles every single fight. Well, that was everything that I had to do in order to become a pro fighter and get my first pro fight at 34 years old. And I really hope that you found some of this information useful and if you have please give the channel a subscribe as well as like this video also if you are an up and coming fighter or you're a late starter looking to get into boxing and you may need help with learning the fundamentals or techniques of boxing as well as just more about the sport in general i did start a community that will cost ten dollars a month which is really less than 34 cent a day where you can learn boxing techniques strength and conditioning a little bit about nutrition you'll learn some social media growth strategies as well as there will be live calls every single week where you'll get the opportunity to interact with me live in real time and that link for the community will be in the description below again if you enjoyed this video as usual please keep working on your techniques and fundamentals it's your boy key i'm out